Alrighty, we'll uh, call the workshop to order. We're going to have a one hour workshop. Uh, I think uh, you guys that are here got this little uh, bullet point discussion items I just threw together. Nothing on here that I'm 100% that's, that's, in favor of. It's just uh, a start point. And uh, so if, if y'all don't mind, and a lot of I think most of these items we've talked about one time or the other. And so uh, let's start with, uh, well, there's some more, uh, and one to uh, Dr. Two. May there. Yeah. And that also the, the little automated thing too, uh, Chief, if you got an extra one of those. There's your, there's your homework, Dr. Um, Anyway, uh, Dr. I was just telling them uh, we open the meeting, we'll limit it to one hour, and if we have to have another workshop one day, we will. But we talked about most of these things before, just to see if we cash them out. So the, the first item is a, a sticker. Sticker required. We've got, we've got uh, resident stickers now, and we've got out of resident stickers. So, Sticker required. Okay, we have a sticker. If you don't have a sticker, what are we going to do? Well, I think part of the problem is with the envelopes that people aren't reading it and they aren't tearing off the tab off the envelope and putting that in the window if they pay as they go up. Currently, they're required to put it off. Payment in the box if they do not have a sticker on there. But Mike is correct on there. If you want to do compliance on it, we've got a better, has a better system to where we can go by and check to make sure they have that compliance system. And, have we already bought the new stickers? Yes. So have we dispersed any of the new yes. stickers? And how did you decide which ones <coughs> to send out? What we did was we're verifying by copies of driver's license. So everyone that had the old sticker should have received the new one? No, it's not unless they're asking for it. We just didn't blanket send out new um, permits out there to people. Uh, as there, because everybody's expired as about as a Gulf County resident. I knew when I saw the date on the back of mine expired last month, so I had to come get a new one. So at that point, we had to show verification that we are a Gulf County resident. Okay. To get the free one. And everybody else will you know, show that the last four to be so, so this conversation brings up uh, item five and item eight. Item five, <clears throat> more user-friendly signage. The signage down there on the box now, you, you have to go to the eye center and get some eyeglasses to read it. Uh, so we need, we need a better sign to educate folks. Now, if you, if you had this thing down there, it would, it would be Self-explanatory, I think, but, but right now we we got to have better signage. And number eight, we got to have a big public education campaign to let these folks know that had old stickers to come get a new sticker for local residents. So I think those. I mean, the whole idea so we we can enhance our asset that we have down there, which is an un unbelievable asset we have. We want to collect the money so we can make it better, but we want to collect the money because we know we're not getting maybe 50% of the folks at lunch to pay. So, uh, the, the, uh, so in the interim, we, we, number one, we need a better sign over that box. Number two, we need to make it explanatory enough that they'll pull that envelope out of there 
Yeah, they're using the envelope, but 75% but of them are putting the whole envelope in with the payment. They're not tearing off the tab that they need to be putting in the window of the meter. Right. So uh, the third item is what they do in Mexico Beach. I don't know if they do it other places or not. They have an employee down there making sure you pay when you put, put your vote in. That's an expense, but would it pay for itself uh, if someone was down there? Now, I know there, we, uh, I talked to Dr. May, and he, he thinks his base saver group would even provide volunteers uh, to, uh, to do that. And uh, at no cost to us. And so that's an option. That's an option. If we if we don't want to burden our police, which is already shorthanded, you can go down there and check check stickers, check dashboards. Um, we have someone there that would make sure. And this is not full time. This would be weekends and busy times, holidays, stuff like that. So uh, let's do that. So, uh, and under that, uh, of course, they would have to have a, have a radio that they could contact the police if they had problems with the folks down there. Uh, we hope they would just act as goodwill ambassadors of the city, and, and, uh, but you know, you've always got some issues that, that folks are not going to do right. And if we had that volunteer or employee down there, could we have a designated city cell phone that has that little Apple square on the top and it it will take your credit card and you can sign and send it. That's that's uh, you see them in different places, the place down the frame place downtown. They they've got that. It's pretty it's a cool feature and it's, it's tried and true, it's been out for quite a long time. So uh, that that's an option. Uh, camera at the ramp, uh, that would be somewhat of a de deterrent. Hopefully, that would cause people to pay. Uh, like Commissioner Hoffman said a while back, uh, you know, you'll be told if you, if you uh, don't do this, if, if we really wouldn't do it, but it'd be more of a, more of a deterrent. So, uh, so that, that's, a, that's uh, an item. So, I guess. I think those right now kind of open it up to discussion for those items uh, before we get down to, to a couple more. Because I think our pressing issue, and it always has been, stickers and enforcement. So, there you go. Mary, do you want to get a report as to what we've collected in the last couple of months? Kind of seen That'd be great. Yes, yes, sir. Go ahead. Mike gave us some finances today, so I'll put a look at that on that. Last month, we got $7,678 last month. Now, that includes the $50 that people are paying plus in the box. So we have $7,700 last month. Yeah. It's significantly great. Is it broke down? We can give it to you broken down. Yes, sir. I'd just like to have an idea of how much is the pay on the weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, you know, line item <clears throat> six on here. I we saw can that. Get it, we can get a monthly on the agenda broken down like you're talking about. Yes. And that will give us. Yeah, we can add that to the agenda. Yes. Yeah. And break it out between launches and stickers. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, we had a big push for people paying for the $50 stickers. A lot of that folks are going to pay for those. Because they just expired, right? Well, a lot of people buy it the first year because they come down from Georgia and Alabama the first to see them. You know, a lot of people don't vote down here in December but they start to vote. We've got 17K year to date and we've got about $75,000 in that fund. You How much was the total? So uh, about 75000 Now, we had committed some of that money for the fishing dock at the moment. Yeah, those expenses, we had a line item budget of $3,000 in the budget. We, not, we did not transfer those funds out of our escrow account. We just absorbed it in our operating budget. Which, um, was that 
the one that we dedicate and put that up. I just remember quite a while back, I was, for some reason I'm remembering 17,000 that we voted to shift some of the boat landing money and help with uh, building the one fishing pier. Oh, yeah, okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, the large ticket, seventeen thousand, was transferred. I was thinking of okay. uh, smaller items. I just don't want to dollar charge. move that money if we've already what voted was? somewhere else. Okay. Um, um, now, what fishing pier are you talking about? To replace the one that was destroyed, the pavilion behind the marina. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Down on the bulk we had we had two, and we voted a while back just to do one right, right there in the middle. Good deal. Was it offset insurance money? Um, I think expensive. Well, I think it was actually pre storm. Uh, I think you're right. We got the pre storm, and now we look at it now. And the issue is the actual piles and everything down there. So, looking at big boats, we go back to the inside and let's go back and do that again because of the cost associated with the piles. I, I remember that. I think uh, I'm going to get a little off track, but not far off track, but I. I think those piles are fine. We don't, of course, we don't want to go out in the water anyway. Big old Crusoe piles are probably some 15, 20 feet down. Uh, I'd, I'd say we we need to look at getting an engineer to see if it will take something. But that's going to be the big expense, have to say. So, so let's uh, kind of put that on the back burner a little bit. <clears throat> uh, maybe ask Josh to. Uh, get down there and check it out and see what it was for. But anyway, uh, so uh, so we got seventy five thousand dollars after the seventeen has been transferred. That's correct. So so that's good. Do you have anything else on that? That's no, right. So uh, get back to square one. Uh, open for discussion of what. What you think we should pursue? Like what I'd like to try to just get out of this meeting is is something we can all decide and like. We can go ahead and vote on it in the city meeting, and let's do it. We can beat this thing around for way too long. Uh, it does. I mean, I'll, I'll start off just with, with if you follow oh, yeah, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's not picking up with the mask and all with this. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Hey, I'm Dustin May. I live in Port St. Joe. And um, I just had some ideas about the boat ramp that I'd like to make public to the city. Um, one, I think that, that we need to get some signs down there. Specifically, there needs to be a sign right there when you're pulling in on the right. It needs to be at least four by four that has our requirements for boat ramp fees. Um, stickers, if you don't have this, it should say something to the effect of if you do not have a sticker on your car, you must pay and have a whatever on your dashboard. That's thing number one. Number two, the failure to comply with this will mean towing of your vehicle and or fines defined by whatever statute. Um, and that needs to be a four by four sign when you're pulling in on the right right there. I mean, not, not a one by one, but a four by four sign with big letters. Whatever size box you want to put up there, I personally think the box we have is way too small. We need a bigger box. And we need a big sign right there that says, step one, pick up envelope. Step two, fill out the car tag. Step two, step three, rip off envelope top. Step four, Deposit envelope, step five, put tag on dashboard. I mean, I hate to say it, but that's what it takes. Um, and I think that would be another four by four sign right there in orange. You know, I'm just thinking if I owned this thing, I'd be making about $100,000 a year now. Um, I, there's just so much opportunity, you know. So those two signs could immediately go a long way towards getting the compliance we talked about, about the people that actually want to pay let making it easier for them to actually do it. Because some people want to pay and they go up there and they're like, gosh, it's too complicated to head with. So I think that would solve that. All right, I don't have cash. Well, I'm gonna get to that. Yeah. Second thing, a camera. We had a camera up there and, and maybe it would say on the signs, you know, 
entering these premises, by entering these premises, you're allowing yourself to be filmed or whatever the legal requirement is to put people on camera. It's you, you don't have to have the legal requirement. Okay, so the the public, camera up there with a red light beacon, I don't care if it's film or not, but a camera with a red light beacon is going to increase your compliance by about 75%. Yeah, whatever. I mean, it just all you need is a sign. I mean, yeah, but, but a camera makes a big difference. So that'd be the third thing. Um, so the um, volunteer to, to take up money, I really think that one of the things you could do is is you know you could charge somebody eleven dollars in cash or ten dollars for using the Venmo. I mean, so so basically to me it seems like the city would be much happier if with the less cash you had to handle, the better, I would think. Um, the more stuff that got sent straight from the straight into the bank account. Would probably be, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just thinking aloud, it might be easier for everybody in the city to deal with. I would want people to use credit cards, but for me, although it costs two and a half percent, it's cash I don't have to track down and handle and call from point A to point B with volunteers. And anyway, that's up to y'all, but that would be something that's pretty simple and easy to do just to have that cell phone with that app on it. It's real easy to do. You, you, you've probably all seen them. How would you know that person paid? If you did Venmo, Venmo or if you did, that, that, that's a good question. Are you have to hand them an envelope, yeah. tab with and with their with their license plate on, it. Yeah. or or have a have an envelope there and, and, and you know stick the receipt or the or the envelope and hand it to them. And say, okay, here's your receipt. Stick this on your dashboard like you do everybody else. You know, I, that's just off the top of my head. Yeah, that's the question. If you have an employee or volunteer. Right, and then this is all about that. that this will be an employee volunteer. So the, the rest of it would be, you know, here's. I mean, I don't know if you guys, you go to Venice, Louisiana, and launch your boat. There's there's a boat, boat launch down there. It's surrounded by two private marinas. They're down there 24 seven. You show up at four o'clock in the morning, they're gonna collect that 15 bucks. I mean, that's a major source of their revenue. Yeah, you know? and they've got volunteers there to do it. They're not city employees. They're volunteers, but. Maybe there's some city employees that want to make a little extra money. I don't know. You know, that'd be something y'all could figure out. But having a person down there is not difficult to do. I feel confident if you guys didn't want to use your people, we could come up with some volunteers that would be willing to, to help out. Um, and I'd be happy to take that on if you want to. Um, so, so I have a glass of here. As far as as far as penalty, um, I do think that there's got to be a way in the history of Fort St. Joe that we used to be able to write parking tickets for people who didn't put money in the in the parking meters. Um, maybe those statutes have disappeared or expired, but at some point this city had the authority to give you a ticket. Uh, the meter maid had the authority to give you a ticket if you didn't put your money in the, in the, in the parking meter. That used to have. I would think that statute would suffice. I'm not a lawyer, but I just can't imagine the city not having that kind of authority. And for me, you go down there and write a couple fifty dollar tickets, all of a sudden everybody's gonna start paying the rules. It probably wouldn't take me, you know, but all of a sudden everybody's like, oh gosh, now they're serious. I think that what we need to do is we need to pick a day and spend some money advertising in the star, and then where whoever else you want to advertise with and say, you know, as of you know. Labor Day, you've got to have a sticker. I don't care if you're a city resident or a county resident or out of town. If you don't have a sticker, you got to pay. As of you know, I just threw out Labor Day because it gives everybody time to do it. But as of this day, guys, this is serious business. Now, if you wanted to have those volunteers give everybody another ten days after Labor Day, whatever. But there's got to be a a day, a line in the sand, and then there may be a second line in the sand. But then it's really a line. Yeah, and at that point. It's real. And I think that's the biggest hurdle we have to cross. It's not the people coming from Panama, Blumstown, Mariana. They'll pay or they've already bought the $50 right. ticket. The biggest problem we're going to have is the people that live here and been here longer than me and drive down there because they're too damn lazy to go get the free decal. <laughs> but the fact is, I agree with you, Fisher, but the fact is, is that everybody that uses that boat ramp either knows or should know that that is an unbelievable resource and it's a privilege to be able to use it. I mean, some of the old timers that used to think that was just the way it was, I mean, I'm not saying there might not be a couple of those guys around, but anybody else ought to have, ought to. <laughs> well, 
I've been using a long time too, and I firmly understand the need for our city to collect enough money to keep that place up. And if you don't understand that, then you've got to go back to the drawing board. Well, I think most people cool. understand this one too, that they really by now, they know that they should have a sticker. And the so last we're thing. We're allowing them to use it free county and city. Absolutely. There's absolutely no excuse. And, and the last thing is, I think that, that and, and y'all brought this up kind of, is we need to be 100% transparent about what this money is being used for. It's being used to, to improve and develop our waterfront footprint down there, the boat ramp, the fishing pier, the whatever. It, and people, you know, you guys be transparent about that, about, you know, every every twice a month, whatever, have a report on what we collect and what we're doing. And, and it's public knowledge, then we feel real good about saying, look, this money is earmarked and dedicated to the improvement of our waterfront pier footprint. If you don't want to be a part of that, then you're not, I mean, you're saying basically you're not a really good, very good citizen of this community. Go get your free boat sticker so we can charge the people who are willing to pay. I, I just don't think it's going to be an issue. Yeah, you're going to have five guys raise cannons, but you know what? Who cares? Uh, anyway, uh, and, I, and listen, I'm not just up here to, to give ideas. I'm available. I've got some resources for my own time and with the organization that I'm involved with to help. And so I would, I'm, I'm offering my services. So, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, comments. I, I just feel this because we are in control of it. And, and Start penalizing people for not doing what they're supposed to do. I think we'll be fine. Um, I like the money machine. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I said if we just got it. I'd like to study it a whole lot more and, and uh, talk to Mike about it a whole lot more. Um, it, I mean, um, it looks easy. It doesn't look. I don't. I don't. Well, let's while we're on it, let's ask Mike. Yep. One of the monthly charges. Yeah, so I just dug into this this afternoon, so I don't have a lot of detail on this, but I did get the preliminary pricing on what it might cost for a machine that, that, that would handle cash and credit uh, and, and total cost with the purchase of the equipment, the additional software, uh, the work we'd have to do to bring the power in and so forth. I'm estimating about $12,000 in total cost to install an electronic a uh, vending machine that would take credit and cash so and dispense a uh, ticket. So it's going to be the online or be a uh, like Verizon or yes, something else? Yes, we would, we would have monthly costs for the electric and for, for a phone line. Uh, absolutely. Now, what those costs would be, I've not dug into that, so I don't have an answer for you on that. Uh, but I certainly can work on that. So, so a phone line uh, and cost, but. Uh, I will say that we just talked about uh, where you could uh, <coughs> ten dollars a month on Verizon or something like that. Ten fifteen hundred twenty five. Well, we were talking briefly about what our charge is ten dollars. Out of that ten dollars, you got to figure you've got two or three percent. I think Doug may discuss that earlier. Yeah, I'm talking about what what kind of service are we going to be use a satellite to run it? We're going to use a phone yeah. line, or we're going to use a cell service? That that that's what yeah, we're going to I, I have to. We've got to have a way to figure out, and we got if we do it, we got to talk about uh, what we're going to do when it's out. If no services down, <clears> bad <throat> weather, electrical issues, that type of thing. You yeah, probably got to be a DSL line for all this, so that means we got to find out exactly where we got to back up to get it, which is probably for the capital city bank. Um, um, you just said we made $17,000. How many months was that? That was year to date. In this year fiscal year, that would be October through July. We budgeted 20 grand, which was a little less. We've been averaging about 24,000 a year. We budgeted a little bit less. Uh, I'm, I'm just thinking, I'm, like, I'm just thinking ahead. If, um, you know, the cost for um, the, the satellite phone or whatever, and plus the $12,000 setup cost, um, I was just thinking the money that we missed down that amount of time um, when we could have, it, it probably would double what it's going to cost to install it. You know? So 
So that's just something to think about. Yeah. Josh, I'm just going to say, I, I know last year I was at a wedding and uh, there's a couple of communities that had those type of things for parking down at their what at their docks and the marinas and all up in, in New England. We were up in Cape Cod, and um, it wouldn't be hard, I'm sure. And, and Mike probably already has all this data, but I'm sure there's other little cities that are doing this, and it's pretty much just you could call them up and say, "Hey, how's this working for you?" and what what's the downside and the upside of it? And, and I, I imagine you guys have those networks. If not, I could tell you where I was and saw it being used. And yeah, we before you walked in, we asked Mike to check around and see where I'm losing some people. Cities in the area that yeah. they, they have. So anyway, I mean, I, I guess they could they probably tell you real quick what the good and the bad and the ugly was on those systems, and then you could really help to make it decision. Yeah, yeah I, I I fully support putting whichever machine whichever plan we pick. I think, like Dusty said, the first step we have to do is, is uh, signage, explain the, uh, to the public what we're, what we're moving forward, what we're gonna expect in the near future, get the machine installed, put the lights up, put the camera up. I would like to utilize some of the volunteers for a, maybe just an educational phase. Uh, if you know some of the busier weekends that somebody would be involved in assisting people and here's the machine if you need help I can help you with it uh, uh, once that gets going people will then consider the Port St. Joe boat landing a place that you are going to have to pay to utilize the service um, right now I think the feeling is ah, they don't really care uh, I have, I've been launching a boat quite a bit lately, and I, I did see some people the other day. One family got out, first thing they did, uh, one of the people started filling out the paper, and the other person said, oh, are, are we supposed to pay? And that told me that we don't have the proper signs down there. And then she was like, yeah, you know, and then stopped. She, I don't even think she saw the machine. Uh, so you have some that just aren't going to pay, and then you have some that they have no idea we're expecting them to pay. I, but I think the machine with a designated line, I think you'll find out that the internet service is very cheap. I've got game cameras that are $120 for a whole year, unlimited pictures and videos. You know, so I can't imagine that would be a costly factor. So, so uh, do, do we agree that we need more Signage. Yes. Yeah, okay. uh, cameras. We agree on the sticker required. Uh, we still, you know, the payment method, we're, we're still, let's say, researching that a little bit. But we may, I think we agree with, we like the machine if, if we can figure out it's going to help us. Because I think maybe some of the other places we're going to find that. They're probably charging everybody, even their citizens. So then we we got to figure out what we're going to do for the locals. You come by and you get a card and you, you swipe it. Uh, the machine has the ability to to uh, uh, to apply for the tag. So you can put the vehicle tag into the system, and the person would enter their tag number, and it would give them a receipt. So we would have the ability to load vehicle tag numbers into the system and allow someone to ax it. And that way you wouldn't need stickers if you did that because they would come into City Hall, we would, we would register them, add their tag number to the system, and then they could enter the tag number to get the access printed out. Printed, and get the out. stickers. Yeah, but if you have the tag, if you have the decal, you don't mess with the machine at all. You just launch your boat and park. True. Uh, because I can see where that would be problematic. Uh, you know, you'll have, I had a buddy of mine I used to work with already called me and say, hey, can you give me one of those decals? <laughs> I, said, I sure can, can you send me 50 bucks? <laughs> you know, but I could have given him my tag number. Yeah, yeah that's what I went that way. But yeah, the decal is the ticket. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Okay. yeah, the decal person the need to go to the machine. You don't have to hold the line up or anything. They can just lock it. Yeah, I, you know, I was, I was just thinking, would it be an advantage or disadvantage if we broadened 
where you can get the free decal. Like, if, you know, should we be supplying the courthouse with decals for the city if somebody came in and wanted to buy a beach permit? Uh, and they have already proved that they're local and they're going to pay the fee for the beach permit. You know, would it be nice that the clerk or the tag office would then say, well, you know, you can also have a decal if you have to supply your vehicle tag number. Just be an easier way, and then you're not burdened so much. City Hall giving out these decals. The only thing is, the GLS thing is our system here to make sure that we have all these records in the City Hall. But other than you could, the only thing is, first you have to get that other office to do that service for us, then you have to come back and plug all that stuff in. And then if it was going to be a situation of money, which these, if it's just local or not, I don't think we want to lose control of that. Because we also verified that they're local residents, local residents and that's vehicles registered locally as well. You would be amazed the stuff people bring down to us trying to claim what oh, I, I, I think when we when we start our publicity campaign and pick a date, then we need to we also need to put an address in there with the city hall and says, if you want to do this by mail, send us money and uh put it in a pre stamped envelope with your with your address on it. And we'll and, and we'll uh, you know send us who you are. I don't know if there's a way to verify it by mail. Like I'm, I'm thinking aloud here, there probably isn't any way to verify somebody's identity over the mail. Though, is it? I mean, as far as their residency, they, you, you need to see their driver's license. The property appraiser side. You go on there and have a property appraiser. You know, if it's somebody from Georgia that owns a house, that I have their home address back where they. Yeah. Sure I think it'd be easier for you guys just to make people come in and bring the damn driver's license. This is yeah. not that big of a burden. Yeah. For a free permit to launch it that long? Come on, dude, you gotta jump through some hoops. <laughs> All right, so so uh, sticker, signage, uh, what about the camera? Everybody like the camera idea? Uh, absolutely. Camera idea, anybody read? Just speak up and don't do you like it. I'm so so. I'm to see a real one, right? Yeah, there should be a camera down there. We're already forgetting that. The TDC had a camera on that pole. Because when I was working, I would use that camera. You could go on there, there was a live feed. You could go on their website and just view the camera. So it ain't nothing new. Now, I will say we used it to figure out who was coming and going at two and three, four in the morning. <laughs> sit down and sit down there. But, uh, is it still there? I, I don't think it is. I don't think it survived. I think Michael probably took it. Yeah. Yeah. But it was pointed right at the boat ramp. Yeah. Our monthly uh, report line item on the agenda. We like that. Sure. And so we know what we're collecting, kind of broken down on a, what we say, a weekly basis. How I'll often do we collect? We collect weekly, but certainly every, every two weeks we could update it for the each meeting. So just once a month, uh, sure. on the city agenda, we can have yeah. that line sure. item. Okay. Uh, so we make, well, this, we need to pick a date and start educating the public if we want to do, do something. And do we have time to sufficiently, I mean, we got the rest of this month, we could do it. September one. Uh, when is scallop season? And September fifteenth or so September something. something. I, that's why I raised my hand in the meeting today when you, you, yeah, you saw yeah. me because he was talking about when they were going to start. It's it got pushed back. It starts uh, August sixteenth. So whenever they're doing that demo, you probably don't want to interfere with scallop. Uh, I think it's thirty days. Too, I think it's September fifteenth. Yeah. I don't know if the Scholar Festival is happening or not. I haven't heard anybody know. I don't think anything we, we could certainly do it for October 1, our new fiscal year. Start to, that might be a good time. That gives us yeah. plenty of time. I don't think so. Run I several think. ads in the paper. Yep. I, I got notes. Uh, we have a Facebook page. We got a web page. And we got a star. We could probably send it. Send some reminder on the water bill as well. As well as uh, the chamber would be happy to 
yeah. send it out on there. They're well, they're doing just about daily now. COVID. So, so the new signage and the camera and and a start start advertising a start date of October one for enforcement of the launch date. Right. So the biggest key on the biggest stuff is forward. That's the biggest decision you gotta make. What kind of camera space is this gonna be? So that's gonna require ordinances and they're gonna get referred to the court's office. Well I think Dr. Ray had a point we get Clint maybe to look back and see if there's anything in our ordinances anywhere that would allow asking, Jim, us without going starting. That's why I was asking Jim how long ago how long ago was that part? That's more recent than that. He's in the 70s. Yeah. We had part of me in the 70s. Like yeah. 40 or 50 years ago. <laughs> 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 I remember being out there. They, they were in the 80s too. I, yeah. I, I, can't remember when yeah. I know they were there in the late, late 70s when I was in high school. We had them. I mean, I think they might have got rid of them about that time. I'll take a look. Yeah, I mean, probably we have to this ordinance thing with fines and all that, what's that on with, with public notice and all that? Two two months, six, how long does it take us? Over a month, you gotta have two meetings, two public meetings. What if we just added what we're discussing now to our downtown parking ordinance that's well ahead of that? We're about to have a workshop on that. We add language to that to cover the boat landing fees and parking. We have neither in place right now. Yeah, we don't have not one yet. <laughs> <We're working. laughs> the, the one we currently have doesn't work. That's the problem. Um, I would just say this is a good opportunity to encompass boat ramp, parking, and golf club because we we need a fine system for all of that because we don't we don't have that. If, if there there is an ordinance that says that. Uh, all uh, traffic laws within the you know, state traffic laws fall. That's the golf course. Well, I was trying to look that up. Then it, then it falls under Florida statute. But you're going to have to have a fine system that covers the clerk's yeah. office and, and the judge and, or whoever you're going to have to cover. But it, it's uh, the city would be beneficial. I mean, we don't write a thousand tickets, but we get no money from what we do write. But if you wrote a city ticket, for speed, that's fifty dollars less than the state fine. That money comes to the city. What's left after you pay the clerk? Well, you also, if you're, if you're going to charge someone with a violation of some sort, you have to have a way they can say, "I didn't do it." You're crazy. You, have to you got. I, I got to go in front of the judge. You got to sign off. Like, right. Where you can fight it if you want. If you didn't think you did it, you have to be able to every day in court. I'm going to have to figure that out. I mean, I've, I've got too many traffic tickets and too many cities for parking for it not to be doable. Yeah, I, I, I got one in Savannah and it was just a little receipt about that Boots big. On and the said, and, yeah, I mean, I mean, it didn't give me an option to find it. It said pay it here. Same for Tallahassee. Yeah. I paid several when my daughter was in the school. Up there. And you talk about towing. I, I had my boat trailer towed in Key West one time. And you talk about being in hot to the mafia now. That was a serious deterrent. I don't, I don't mess around with boat trailers anymore if you will. So it's doable. I don't know how, but it's doable. I mean, they. <laughs> Clint, and you might I, I think the bottom line to all this is researching other cities and counties and seeing what they all have as from the ordinance all the way to the kiosk. Um, I was going to mention a, there's a, um, some, I believe it's called Mobile Park. App that a lot of these cities are using now yep. that you download and you, uh, use your app, and it's already tied to your credit card. And you type in the four digit number of the kiosk you're at, and, and you type in your plate number, or actually, it saves your plate number wherever you go, and, and it all automatically detects. But it also takes credit card too, but it's, it's very, very simple to use. Um, but it would take some education too for some people. So that would help. Uh, but I, I like the idea. And, and, and as far as citations are, the program 
that we use with the county. County already has county citations on there. I just call the people and we design the city citation that's on our computer system. No cost, we already pay for it. And it's all computerized. You just run the tag, paste it to it, and print it out. Yeah, it needs to be a system where you don't have to have a person assigned down there but you can have and you can ask or whoever's on patrol hey during your ship swing by the boat landing a couple yeah, times. I, I probably you, go through there five times a ship. Right. And then all you gotta do is look on the dash and if there's not a decal on the vehicle, there should be something on the dash that's spit out from that machine. And same thing with the trailerless cars parking over on the trailer side. When I sit down there, I, I got down there about seven o'clock. And there was already two cars in the trailer parking, and everybody complained about it. I mean, everybody put a boat in was complaining about it. Well, we need to ask for charter boat operators to tell the customers not to park over there. Yeah. yeah. That's who that is. Yes, that's seven o'clock. Absolutely. And, and that's a whole other topic, me and Brett and Brody, but I'm not going to get into it today. But uh, yeah. and we can at least ask them to ask their clients to not park in the boat park. Yeah, I mean, it's just. Line item seven on here. Uh, <laughs> we we charge Fishing Express and anybody else that docks down at, at our property at, down there uh, because they make make money using our facility. Uh, is it fair for the charter boat captain to take out six people for seven, know, two or three thousand dollars a day to use our facility to make? Make money off of without the overhead except the vehicle. So that stir up a can of worms, but it's, it's a point that we just put back our mind. It stir up a can of worms for five people. Yeah, probably. And I don't, I don't know that it really. I think it stir up a can of worms with one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think the other people would look at it as part. I mean, they're already paying a higher fee for the boat registration, insurance, the equipment on the boat. You're even paying for the license to cover the people to fish. I think that they would look at it as something that, that was fair. Yeah, um, absolutely. And yeah. Some of them are doing pickup at the uh, at like five o'clock in the morning. They'll run over to the marina, right, yeah. and do pickup there. Yeah. Yeah. People are real aware of that. I think they'd be happy to pay maybe the, the non uh, <laughs> county person, you know, fifty bucks a year. <laughs> Commercial license, yeah. Commercial. I think it needs to be more, and I'll buy the first one. I think right. so. Even the marina may have charged some of the um, charter boat captains that didn't have slips in there to pick up their back when it was blowing dry yeah. to pick up people. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be the place because didn't the new marina already tell them there'd be no charter boats in there? I haven't heard that. I mean, so I heard people talking, talking about it, but I haven't heard that from people in charge. But again, they, for two, a couple hundred bucks a year, they get parking for their customers. They get a place to launch and take out their boat with great security, super facilities, dockage. I mean, place to clean fish. I mean, yeah. good yeah. night. They're driving to run in, you know, 200 trips a year, a dollar a, a, dollar a trip. Yeah, that's why I don't think it'll be a problem. Uh, and nobody got to complain about it. It needs to be 200 bucks, in my opinion, not 50. That, yeah, that's long as it's a bit of a Yeah. Right, so we need to research and see if we can find some fees that are in place that other communities are charging. Absolutely. There you go. Arenas. Mm -hmm. They were charging turbo captains $1,000 a year just to be able to clean their fish that way at the arena. I they couldn't even drop their, put their boat in. Uh, yeah, yeah. Really? They were trying to run them off. I mean, <laughs> yeah, they wanted to. But I don't think 200 bucks is unreasonable for somebody. Okay, so so we have agreed October 1 is, is our drop dead date for implementing the new program, which would require a sticker. We'll have a camera, we'll, we'll have more user friendly signage. And uh, I'll, I'll, Dr. Mays already volunteered his services if you want. He can, Design a sign for us, turn it in, Jim, and we all look over. I, I just have to ask Doc, don't make it too wordy. We want a big welcome to our marina, and you know, it's going to cost you 10 bucks or whatever. Then, when you get down there, 
it tells you how to do it, and then you know go go from there. I, I think that would be. I think it's I think it's important to put on the sign. Welcome to Fort St. Joe World Class Facilities. And then at the bottom, put all money collected here is used to improve this facility and other waterfront facilities in Fort St. Joe for your enjoyment, or something yep. like that. Yep. I mean, so it's more of a positive spin than a no, negative. Yeah. yeah, it's not a big enforcement hammer type yeah. thing. It's, uh, well, most people will go, gosh, you know, that's, that's, that's reasonable. Yeah. But that enforcement is going to be key if you want to stay correct. Right now, I think the enforcement down. goes back to the, to the, um, to the machine. Because what you guys were saying earlier, it just rang a bell with me, is that, you know, we can go down there and you can take 15 of those envelopes if you want to and put them in your back pocket. But yeah. that machine can only spit out one ticket. And that ticket is going to be much more difficult to counterfeit than the, than the lid of an envelope. You know what I mean? Yeah. And again, a, another ad, a, a, another check mark for good on the machine. I'm just saying that, that, that a dummy camera will be a deterrence. Because if, if, if you try to do something sneak and do something wrong, you see, you look up and see that camera looking at you, you're not going to do it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't take a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't take a chance if it was, if it was working or not. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Yeah. All you need the red blinking light. That's it. So, so uh, Chief or Mike or somebody kind of maybe y'all work together and give us a good. Uh, you can buy it. Yeah, yeah buy there, there was one in 16th Street for. 15 years yeah. mm -hmm. on the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. It they sell them. What, what about what, about what um, Mr. Hoffman was talking about? A game camera type scenario that you only pay 120 bucks, 120 a, bucks year. a year. So, so is there a camera out there that really works on that platform that, that we could use yeah. if we have to? The camera is not that expensive. Plus, you're going to have to have a designated Wi-Fi, probably a hardline Wi-Fi, to this machine. Well, you could pull Wi-Fi to go up the pole on the same line, making it from the PDC building. Right. Being that they had a camera there. I actually talked to Banyan about IP cameras the other day. We were discussing you could set up a system where you could view everybody coming into the city. You know, for car burglaries and stuff like that. If it's three o'clock in the morning, there's only a few people moving. But he said an IP camera. The only problem was getting power and getting a connection. Yeah, that's basically other than the camera, your only cost. If it's already there with the kiosk, right. you got, you got everything. Wait, if, if, if the, if the uh, TDC building has strong enough Wi-Fi, I mean, you could you could probably. Get their Wi Fi, they'd probably allow it. you to ping off that for, the, for that camera anyway. Uh, who's the city? Who's the city IP guy or girl? Banyan. Banyan. I mean, my God, just put it in his lap. He'll solve. You guys know all. We're just, I don't know about y'all. I don't know all that stuff, but they do. And as far as recording, he, he quoted us of uh, the camera system for the PD and said that the DVR is big enough. It would save six months on eight cameras. So if we had one more, it wouldn't be nothing. Yeah. You just wire it in. It's doable. Cool. No problem. Well, it sounds like since the city is now discussing the boat landing project, I'd like to see and, and ask support to shift this project from the CRA Bill Kennedy group that we met at 11, and let's just go ahead and take it on at the city level. Because it seems like it's going to end up at the city anyway. Because he was already looking at running the power line down there, uh, and oh, running power over the Bitcoin station and doing that. Right, but last last time I talked to Bill, he was he was actually talking about grabbing power from that pump that we have there at that retention pond coming down there. And I, I don't know if that's the way we could do it, but we don't need two groups working on the same thing. Whoever's going to do it for this group needs to let Bill know that we'll just take it over and figure out. To get the we power. were trying to get the power to the midsection there. There was conduit that was run. We're trying to find out where that popped out at so we didn't have a general line. Did they find that today? Yeah. They, they were going to go back and look in the next couple of days and then spread Well, out. I, right after I mean, I rode down there and they had everything dug out that deep. 
Right, and they're waiting on, on John to come from the meeting to, to see if he could. I said, well, Clay Small would surely know. Because he was an engineer at the time. I, mean, man, that's not good. I went back down there and it was all covered up and packed down neatly and pretty, but I don't know if they actually found anything or not. I don't know why they covered it back up if they did find something. So, me talking to John about that. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a sticker. We're going to educate starting soon. We're going to get a sign design that we all approve of. A monthly line item on the agenda. We're going to get a camera and a, uh, mic and the chief. And, and, uh, and I'm going to figure out how to record. There you go. We have teamwork. That's way. That's what the county did on the beach travel. That, that's how. So I would I'd look at other Kansas cities and counties and that's both. And then if we want to allow volunteers, they say we want to go down there and be ambassadors someday and pass out some of their material, ask people to stay off grass beds, you know, a little education thing, I think that'd be great. future uh, we are we talked about because we have an easement over by the TDC building that would allow us to put a road so we could come in one way and go out one way you come in, you come in uh, I believe off of uh, 4th Street go by the TDC yeah. building go around on both go far come back you know loop around the same way to get out so so that's one thing, and that in part goes along with that. Landscape right side of the bulkhead. Dr. May brought this up. It, it would look nice if we just start, if we had excess dirt ever, if we could just start start dumping it, dumping it, dumping it, and get enough out there where you could maybe plant some palm trees, have big these tables, if we we're able to put the pier back down there, that, you know, all that. Make it look nice. And if we couldn't put fear back, we can't afford to. Uh, Commissioner Hoffman and some other ideas about putting it, you know, down in that area on that right side of the boat, that right down on the water. Uh, we can do that. We, the city owns a gorgeous piece of property. Yeah. If you haven't been back there, you need to walk back there to the right. And uh, it wouldn't take much in work at all to have access probably just a small bridge that would go across that one low spot, tie it right back into the Maddox property. And then there's already one bridge that is being replaced, but I think that you need one more little spot and there's just a really nice piece of property back there. And, and that brings up this point. You remember we had $10,000 PSJRA had for lighting of that path down there, walking along there. It never that was two years ago, maybe at least. And so so we need to we need to put that on somewhere and you can tie that path in like you say all the way down to the to the launch and then it tie down in front of uh, Sunset Grill and I mean yeah. so, Rick, I'm kinda of poking my nose in city yeah. business, but yeah. it seems to me that the city ought to evaluate um what that piece of property is for right in between uh Mark Haddock's two compounds he's got down there? Already checked on it, can't do it. Can't be done? Nope. Okay. Oh, thanks to Ms. Charlotte, she provided me some stuff today. If, if we sell it, it has to be sold to a, another state agency, uh, governmental agency, nonprofit, so on and so forth. So, so I, I mean, to me, it's, it's, okay. it's, it's not usable. We can't park cars there. We don't, we, and with that being said, and I was going to talk to Charlotte Jim about it, we need to try to do something nice with that piece of property if we're going to, I mean, it's, it's just there now, we're maintaining it for no reason. I mean, not, we have to maintain it, but, but people can't.
can't use it. Is it tied into that property on the other side of the yeah, old yes. cost and how? Yes, oh, yeah. it's all tied in there together. We just, uh, they talk about kayak launches and all that. That'd be great if you can't get a car in there, you can, but they have nowhere to park when they get in there. But, but See, the that, idea back in the day was they were trying to have a bank on walking path and get all the property there. If you weren't able to get all the property from all the property owners, you weren't able to get the old cost and house or the property previously that, that came in on now. So you don't have connectivity between all that property. But we do, if you look at the maps, I remember looking at one of them, the city actually owns a tiny strip of land behind those houses, yes. the restaurant, all of that. I don't know if it's a foot, an inch, or what. But it's submerged. It might I think it's submerged land. But you're right, the footprint over there on the right side of the boat ramp, all the way over to, really from, from Dewey Blaylock's, all the way over to, to the city marine property. I just would like everybody in the city leadership to look at that on Google Earth and start thinking big, because that is a that is an unbelievable footprint of beautiful waterfront, civically owned property that would make our city. The only place you can spend the money is either. It, it, it can no, make our no. city unbelievable, and that there's just got to be these, you know, city architects wanting to get a master's degree in FSU that would love to. I don't know. I just think we could farm that out, come up with some really awesome plans for some pretty cool yeah. people, and, and and start working towards having a real vision towards what our city can look like in 20 years on the waterfront. And uh, I, I, I just think that we'd be remiss if we don't do that soon. Well, we've accomplished a lot. Today, I think, in a short period of time. And uh, any more discussion items uh, you guys can talk about? Maybe by next meeting, we'll have have some things uh, concrete. Uh, two weeks, yeah. In two weeks, we should have some good things. We can move forward with it. But in the meantime, get get with uh, Jim and Charlotte to uh, they need to start this educational campaign and get it kind of written up so we both understand what we're trying to do. I think we need to spin that positive too. The oh, education oh, no, campaign, no. you know, yeah. you know no, in no. order for us to maintain these beautiful facilities, this is what we're going to do. Yeah. All right. Anything else, guys? All right. Let's meet adjourned. Have a good evening, everybody. Jim, I'll get you those.